I'd like to talk to you about transmission of this information to medieval Europe. In Toledo, if you remember, I said there was Christian Spain and Muslim Spain. Christian Spain, as a Muslim Spain, Cordoba was the capital. In the Christian side, Toledo. At Toledo, there was a monastery whose only job was to translate texts from uh, Arabic into Latin. So, uh, Gerard of Cremona is a name that has come to us from the past. He translated 87 Arabic works from Latin, math, astronomy and medicine. And Constantine the African, he is a Christian monk in Italy who translated Arabic medical works. Here I shown a small graphic. This graphic shows Indic knowledge that first went to the Greeks and Romans. Most of it was destroyed in, uh, in the Byzantine kingdom by the uh, Christian uh, rulers who did not want pagan knowledge to exist over there. So it died out over there. However, some of that knowledge existed in Islamic lands, Arab lands, before they became Islam also, in Lebanon, Syria, and all these kind of places. Muslims inherited these works along with knowledge that was destructively obtained from India, and they were consolidators. They consolidated all of this information and was injected into Europe, into Latin, by this translation school that I talked about. Also, there were travelers in every period of time, including colonial people, who directly took Indic knowledge to Europe. And all of this knowledge today has come back to us, bereft of any citations and repackaged with obviously much more refined knowledge systems and so on. Unfortunately, we have lost track of where did this knowledge come from and we are left in awe of the Western civilization which have, could have built such an enormous edifice of knowledge without acknowledging that they stood on the shoulders of your ancestors to understand how to take it from there to the next point on. Here are some examples of transmission of knowledge in 1200s to 1300s. Marco Polo, Jordanus Catalani, several of these people. This book you can download in Google that uh, shows you some of the Indic knowledge in this period of time. 1400s Europeans, Niccolo da Conti, very famous because he visited Vijayanagar and formed eyewitness accounts to uh, how Vijayanagar was in that period of time. His works are very influential in 15th century cartography. Uh, Alfonsi Nicton of Russia, Vasco da Gama, all these are visitors. This book over here, India in the 15th century, talks about voyages to India, knowledge transmissions. 1500s, the Portuguese had come veritably with armies, 13 ships, 1500 men and so on. There were several visitors, some of them, not visitors, conquerors and such things. Some of them, for example, were Portuguese scientists, Pedro Nunes, uh, this is De Castro, who was the fourth viceroy to India. So these are scientists also who came to India and studied Indian works, translated them and took it back with them. This phrase or statues in uh, Lisbon shows these prominent people of the Portuguese society who are looking outward to the ocean because that's where they got their knowledge from, from India. So this monument that is there in Lisbon, I think, uh, Sahana, you took this picture when you went over there. It shows, uh, uh, shows this fact even today. Now, when, uh, when, when Europe finally got its act together, got the uh, knights and the soldiers and the Pope's blessings and everything, they finally went and reconquered Spain. They went through a period of inquisition when they were stamping out the Moorish influence, the Muslim influence in Spain. At that time, any Muslim knowledge was seen as seeking knowledge from Satan, inviting savage retribution. Until that period of time, the nobility of Europe would send their eldest sons to Muslim Spain to learn at the feet of the Moors, because they said Moors have got better knowledge than us, so they would go there and learn. But from then on, it was an uh, inquisition period. So Renaissance European scholars hid their sources and passed off Greek and Indic works as original knowledge. All of a sudden, you had people coming out of dark ages and disease and illiteracy and the oppression of the church, coming out and saying, I invented this, I invented that, and so on. And we barely questioned the veracity of these claims. However, this is, the, this is what was going on over there. So European works in astronomy, math, medicine was greatly predated by Indian and Greek works. However, they ignored citation to Indian sources, therefore I call them plagiarizing. 